So today we're gonna be taking a look at Forescan. Now some people don't like Forescan, but I think it's great. Forescan is something that's gonna make your life so much better. Cut, cut, cut. What is this? I am the director. I make the cuts. Yeah, what's going on, man? I just don't think what you're talking about is appropriate. This is an outrage. What do you mean? Forescan? Yeah, there you go again. Look, some of us just don't have any, okay? What? You thought I said, oh, oh no. You mean you didn't say, oh my God. Oh my God. Sacre bleu. So what is Forescan? Well, I think it's Ford Scan without the D, which is a little unfortunate when you say it fast, but we're not gonna talk about that. So Forescan is an application that lets you basically hack your car. It's, uh, it's an OBD2 reader, it lets you reset codes, things of that nature, and it also lets you change settings on your vehicle that you couldn't otherwise get to, I think unless you were a dealer. Uh, but someone has done some hackery magic and now you can change things on your Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, or Mazda vehicle that is 1996 or newer. So to do that, you're gonna need a couple things. Uh, number one, you're gonna need an OBD2 connector. So there are a few different uh, types. You go to the website forscan.org and they will tell you which ones they recommend. I got the one that goes to USB because I am planning on using a Windows machine to do my hackery here. You can also use your iPhone or your Android phone and do the same thing, I think wirelessly. Slight problem with that though, it turns out that the Russian banks are closed or not that they're closed, they're just not accepting US funds right now. So you can't buy the app through the app store because apparently the way Forescan gets his money is through Russian banks. Uh, they also won't sell you an extended license right now, which you need to get to the programming functions of Forescan. So they do do a temporary two month license. Uh, so I've got that running on the machine right now. And I'm not really sure that I should be hacking into my truck with a program that the only way you can use it is if you pay Russian banks money. But here we are, so I'm gonna do it anyway. And the first step to using Forescan is to charge your wife's tablet because, well, let's just say this is why she doesn't have an electric car. Okay, so we've got the computer charged now. We're going to plug in our OBD2 cable to the port down here. We've got accessory power to the car on, and then we'll just plug it into the tablet here somehow. All right, so we opened the Forescan app here, and it took me a minute to figure this out, but there's a little tiny icon down in the bottom left that looks like two extension cords plugging in, and that's what you press to connect to your vehicle. So it logs in, and it's gonna tell you all the things that it has access to. So it says we're ready to go, let's get through the menus here, uh, so DTC codes, this is kind of like your OBD2 reader, and we can see right off the bat, we are getting more things than my OBD2 reader shows, because right now it shows absolutely nothing, but if you look in here, it shows that some things have happened. There's, it once lost communication with the instrument panel, I don't know. Lost communication with the accessory protocol device, I don't know, I guess these aren't that important if they're not showing up as codes. We've got some invalid data. So if we wanted to, if these were actual codes, we could reset them, we could clear them, and you know, hopefully something would be fixed and they wouldn't come back, but let's let's move on. Uh, we've got tests. So if you want to run tests of various systems, you can come to this section and run your tests. We're not going to do that because I don't really have anything to test and I don't like to study for tests. Next, we've got service procedures. I guess you can reset these modules. So here is one that it could actually be very useful. So if you've paid attention to the truck videos, you know that this truck has a terrible transmission and it seems like every 20 to 30,000 miles, it starts shifting harshly. I have used the Cobb access port to fix that, which costs $1,000, it's a lot. But here, Forescan has access to the TCM module and the TCM table. So people have speculated in comments in the past videos, if you get Forescan, which is much cheaper, it's like 30 bucks for a, a OBD2 adapter, that you could come here, you could clear your TCM or the tables and reset your transmission and be good to go. Your shifting would go back to normal and it wouldn't do the harsh shifting anymore. So if anybody goes and tries that, let us know. Cause right now I don't have shifting trouble, but maybe there's people out there who have foreskin and who, who do have shifting trouble. So go reset your TCM or your tables. Let us know if it works. We've got configuration and programming. And this is where I think things start to get interesting. We're gonna have to look into that. So this is not, it's not a very easy, intuitive to use application right off the bat. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research to figure things out here. Uh, but there are the light versions that I mentioned for iPhone and Android. Well, maybe just Android if you can't get iPhone right now. 
but those are supposed to be more user-friendly, not as in-depth, and they're supposed to be a little bit safer to use. In the Escalade video a while back, I mentioned that I like how the mirrors on the Escalade fold in when you lock the car. Right now, the truck doesn't do that. Supposedly, you can change that so it does. We're gonna try to do that. And the windows. On a lot of cars, when you hold down the unlock button, all the windows roll down, and this truck does not do that right now. Apparently, that's something else you can change, and we're gonna try and do it today. So those are my goals for today. We're gonna see if we can do them. And if y'all have other awesome four scan hacks that you know of, put them in the comments below and maybe we'll try them out. So I am just browsing through stuff here. I went into the body control module and there's some interesting stuff in here. So ambient lighting entry color. So the LEDs all around the car, they're blue whenever you first come into the car. And the only thing you can change is when the car's running, you can change the different colors. I've never liked that they're, that they're blue when you come in because the truck is red. I have red going when the truck is driving around. So we're gonna see if we can change this lighting color and have the, the LEDs always be red instead of blue and then red. And I just don't like the blue. So we're gonna hit edit and we're gonna choose Ford Red. I, I think it's doing something, maybe. The car made noises. There's some other interesting things in here, like daytime running lights include parking lamps. Uh, fog lights have high beams on, so apparently you can change some of this stuff, like when you turn the high beams on, your fog lights turn off, you can change it so they stay on. Lots of interesting things in here. So it turns out there's a helpful spreadsheet out there on the internet that tells you all these specific instructions to do different types of things. So let's say you want to disable your auto start stop, which is another thing that uh, the access port can do, but you can do yourself with Forescan for a lot cheaper. The auto fold mirrors, that's in here. You have to go into the body control module and the PDM, whatever that is, and change some values like to put in an 84 and an F and things in certain spots. So it gets a little bit technical, but with these instructions, I think we can do it. So what I'm seeing here is actually significantly different than what's on the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet has you going in here and editing values in different lines. And this just gives me options of enabled or disabled. So I'm just, just gonna go through here and enable a few things I wanna enable and we'll see if that works or not. Global window close, enabled. Global window open, enabled. Mirror auto fold. Enabled. And then we are going to write. Yes. Global window open, global window close, mirror auto fold. Check. It says program successfully. We're going to turn the car off and on and see if that worked. All right. So I have exited out of four scan, turned the car off and on once, and it is off again. So theoretically, now when we press the lock button, if auto fold works right, the mirror should fold in. Let's see. That did not work at all. The windows, if we unlock and then hold unlock, should roll down. That did not work at all. We're learning. Our entry lighting though, check out our entry lighting. It's now red and no longer blue. Okay, so it turns out there's a difference between DDM module configuration and DDM module configuration as built. If you go to the as built version, it has all the numbers and things that they had on the spreadsheet that we were looking for. So I'm gonna try changing those now and see if this works. All right, we did the scary change the numbers in your car's computer thing. So when we hit lock now, mirrors are going in. Car hasn't blown up yet. Yet. Uh, so the mirrors are in, what else we were gonna change? That's right, windows. We're gonna make it so the windows roll down when you press the buttons on the key fob. So, more car hackery. So I'm not going to bother screen recording this one, but I will put a link to the spreadsheet I found, and that's kind of like the basics of all the different cool things you can do with Foreskin in the link below, so it'll help you decide whether or not it's something you wanna go out and buy. If you could buy it from the Russians. Car hasn't blown up yet. Okay, hackery has been done. Let's check it out. So for this, uh, well, let's lock the truck. Mirrors go in. Now we want to open the windows, so we're going to unlock and then unlock and hold. Oh, there it goes. So unfortunately, it only does the front windows. It doesn't do the back windows. Doing the back windows is an option in the like simple menu, but when you go into the menu where you have to change the values and stuff, it's not an option, or at least it's not on the spreadsheet. So if anybody knows a way to make it 
all the windows, let us know in the comments. But then whenever you lock and then relock, you can turn that second honk off too. Might do that here in a second. Windows go back up, holding the button. So there are a lot more things you can do with foreskin. If you don't like that pesky seatbelt chime, you can turn that off. Not that I'd recommend it, but if you want to. Uh, but until next time, just remember, with foreskin, you can, as long as you have it. See you next time.